Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We may be seated. God bless you. We may be seated. Thank you so much. Uh, this is my second time to be here. The last Easter year, 2017, I'm sure, I was here as well. Thank you so much, Prophet, for honoring me. You know, you make things hard for me. Why? Uh, yes, we have been there together. But you are no longer here. You are up there. So I, I see you as a father to me. But you still see me as a brother. So I'm a bit confused now. But anyway, that's humility. I understand that. But may the good Lord increase you and bless you so much. Amen. Church, let us just say a blessing to the mind of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All leaders, may the good Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. I, I would like to teach uh, maybe for 30 minutes from the book of John. Uh, John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Can they put it there? John chapter 4. John chapter 4, John chapter 4. Uh, I'll title this message, Only If You Knew. Only If You Knew. I'd like to talk about the Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman. She had an encounter with Jesus at the well, but she lacked a revelation. She had knowledge that was natural. What she said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. Which means naturally she had an observation, but she lacked the revelation. So there are times you need to move from the level of observation, just seeing things, to the level of revelation, seeing through the eyes of the Spirit. Seeing through the eyes of the Spirit. Uh, can I have the Bible there? I left mine in the car. Thank you so much, sir. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, from verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it thou, thou being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews has no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me the drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he had given you the living waters. Thank you so much. Let me just pray. Father, we thank you for such a time to hear your word. Speak to us, instruct us, correct us, and empower us for the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This Samaritan woman had an opportunity to encounter the Messiah. But she blew the opportunity because of her knowledge that was carnal. The Bible says a carnal-minded person will not receive the things of the Spirit. So which means we need to grow spiritually so that we can receive the things of the spirit. So Jesus came to the well and he said to the Samaritan woman, can you give me a drink? Which means Jesus was thirsty. The Bible records that he was thirsty and he asked for a drink. But when the Samaritan woman denied her the drink, Jesus went on to say, only if you knew the one asking you, you were the one who was supposed to ask it from him. Why? Because I have the living waters. Which means Jesus has two things. He's thirsty. He's also, he also has the living waters. Aninyota, anemvura. So by asking for a drink, it's a spiritual law of exchange he's demanding. He is not thirsty to an extent that he cannot drink it. But he just wants to give this woman an opportunity to have a spiritual exchange. But she was, not, she was in the carnal level. Because she said, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. If you go deeper with this scripture, you hear saying that the Messiah will come. And the Messiah will tell us all the truth. She is saying the Messiah will come in the future but she was standing in the presence of the messiah but she's saying he will come which means some people will wait for what is already available because they let a spiritual eye or spiritual understanding some people you take long to receive the blessing that god has already brought into your presence why because you see naturally you let the spiritual dimension to connect to the things of the spirit she said the Messiah will come, which means a lot of people in church today, they are praying for many things that God has already deposited in your presence, 
but because you lack a spiritual insight, you will continue to wait for what is already available. What makes, what makes her continue to wait? She was born in a system. She's not the one who said Samaritans and Jews have no dealings. It was already a constitution, a law set up already. She's a victim of a constitution. It was already said long back. So she's just re 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 rehearsing what she already knows about Jews and Samaritans. I'm sure that's the number one challenge. Because when we come from the world and coming to the church, sometimes we bring constitutions, laws, uh, knowledge from the world from the world that will make us not able to receive the things of the spirit uh, the woman is standing in the presence of Jesus and she is calling Jesus a Jew I'll go deeper this way Jesus was a Jew yes Jesus was not a Jew yes and I will explain because uh, a man when somebody is born the DNA comes from the father Jesus is not the son of Joseph. I'm sure you all know. Jesus is a product of the Holy Spirit. So he is a product of the spirit, not of flesh. He was born among the Jews, but not by a Jew. I'm sure somebody is hearing me. Jesus was born by Mary, but the father to Jesus was not a Jew. So she's seeing the other side of Jesus. She's missing the real side of Jesus. There are times when you look at the prophet, you see the wrong side of the prophet, and you feel to connect the other side that is spiritual, deposited by God inside the prophet. Amen. That will make you, that will take you long to receive the things of the spirit. Because you see from the mother's side, when I talk about the mother or the woman, I'm talking about church. When I'm talking about the father, I'm talking about the spirit. So which means when you see from the level of church, not seeing from the level of the kingdom, you miss the things of the spirit. Yeah. You just see him as a leader in the church. You don't see the representative of God on earth. Come on now. So this woman is saying, you are a Jew. Yet spiritually, this man is not a Jew. He's not a product of human. He's just a product of the Holy Spirit. So by seeing carnally, she denied herself an opportunity to tap into the grace. A carnal-minded person will not receive the things of the Spirit. Make sure when you come to church, you take away the carnal mindset and you put on the mind of the Spirit so that you can do or you can activate the blessing that is already available. What you are looking for is available, but inside a thirsty man, Jesus was thirsty, yet he had also the living waters in him. Which means it's all about your understanding, dealing with his thirsty or tapping into the waters. You are not hearing me, you are not hearing me. Yeah. There are two sides in Jesus. He is thirsty, but also he is saying, only if you knew, the one asking you, you were the one supposed to ask it from me, because I have the living waters. Jesus, by wisdom, he had this understanding that no matter how I teach her or explain to her that I'm the Messiah, she will not get me until I prophesy. Thank God for prophets. Amen. <laughs> Jesus went on to pro he moved from teaching and explaining, he went on to prophesy. He said, go and call your husband. And this woman shared another dimension of understanding. She said, I have no husband. Yet there was a man in the house. Why? Because Jesus said, you are right when you say you have no husband because there is a man. So there's a difference between a man and a husband. I'm sure ladies, you know. Sure now. Ladies, I'm sure you know. Sometimes you know the husband, but men oh. And your prayer, I know, you are looking for a husband inside that man. May God turn that man to become a real husband. Jesus. I prophesy into your life. Yeah. May God turn that man Jesus. to be a real husband. Uh, and I'll show you a, a, 
very simple difference between the man and the husband. Jesus said, go and call your husband. She said, I have no husband. Why? Because Jesus is another dimension of a husband to the church. Why? Because he's the one ready to supply the woman with the waters. Amen. But the man at the house she sent this woman to look for water. But there is a man who has water already. Oh, yeah. I'm sure somebody's hearing me. Jesus. So a man who always put demands, but a husband who always supply love, yeah, yeah. understanding, yeah. and everything. Yes, sir. Hey. I'm, I'm sure ladies, you understand this. She knows many churches, church can have one natural life. Church can go to do noga, do noga. But can I eat a husband? Can I eat a husband? Yes. You always supply. You always supply. So this woman had an encounter, an opportunity with the, ma the husband because she's staying with a man at the house. So Jesus prophesied, you are right when you say you don't have a husband because you have a man in your house. So most of us, we, the problems we have are a little bit tricky because when you lack a husband and you have a man, it takes deep understanding to know that I'm lacking a husband. Teach on. There is another dimension of attack from the devil, like from the book of First, First Kings chapter 13. A, a certain woman went on to take somebody's child and exchange with a dead child. There was an exchange, although it was theft, but she was left with something. There are times that what you have is not really yours and it's not the right thing you want. But the devil is whispering to you that be content with this. But the woman said, I looked at the child and I see that he was not mine. Although I have a child, although children can die, but not my child. Yay. She went on to contest. I see you go come to the shiripo. They go verify a shiripo. Is this from God or this is the attack from the devil? Jesus, beware, people. Sometimes the devil will supply. Uh, imagine in the Garden of Eden, they lost the garden because the devil took on the mic and went on to preach to Eve, to Adam that you are limited, you must eat everything. It seems the devil was preaching or was delivering them from the spirit of limitation. Eat everything. Yeah. You know, when Pastor Snake took on the mic, it was a different message. They lost the garden while well, least they've eaten something and they were full. So this woman had an opportunity and encounter with the Messiah. But she denied to give him water. Mm. Why natural understanding can deny you to receive spiritual blessing? You are teaching. You are teaching men of God. God will send a man with the two things sometimes. Your divine helper can be thirsty, but loaded with the spiritual water. Amen. Our uh, prophet is hearing me. Yes. He is hearing me. The first book of Samuel, uh, first Samuel chapter 30, David said, should I pursue and overtake? And the Lord says, pursue, overtake, you recover all. While he was going for recovery, he met a man who was dying. The man was sick. The man was hungry. The man was thirsty. But the thirsty and the hungry man was the one with the right direction where David must go. God did not give David direction. He gave him assurance you will recover. But to go where the Amalekites are, you must feed a hungry man. I don't know whom I'm talking to. Sometimes your divine helper is dying, is thirsty, is hungry. But you cannot see the things of the spirit. You just see the hunger side of the story. Jesus was thirsty, but he was loaded with the waters. And she's saying, no, Samaritans and Jews, they don't share. Sam so she's seeing a Jew. She's not seeing the Messiah. Sometimes it happens to, to ladies or to girls. You have been praying, Lord, give me a right guy. Go Teacher. give me a right guy. And the right guy comes, but you don't see the right things. You see the wrong things. But this guy will become right. 
So because you don't know the future, you only think about the future. That's where the problem is. But thank God the prophet is around. Jesus. He can go inside the future and tell you that this man is not a true. He is a messiah. Jesus. Hey. You only think about the future. You are right there. But thank God the prophet is around. He will not think about it. Uh -huh. The Lord will allow him to get into the future and see the one you are calling Jew is the Messiah. Uh, this is too much. Sometimes opportunities will come as challenges. Jesus was thirsty, yet he was loaded with a heavy supply of water. That's why he said, only if you knew. Lack of knowledge was the key. She went on to say, ah, this is the well that our father Jacob dug for us. Even the cattle, uh, even the cow, they drink from this well. After denying Jesus the water, she's saying even the cattle can drink from here. Which means there are things they were respecting more than the Messiah. Respecting the cattle. That's why sometimes somebody cannot bring an offering, but there are cows and cattle that will drink from his pockets. He does not want God to enjoy the money, but if KFC is ready waiting for you there, somebody is ready to eat from your pocket, but you deny Jesus, the Messiah, an opportunity to drink from the well. Yeah. Jesus. Only if you knew she had an encounter, a great privilege, but she lacked spiritual insight. You know, sometimes people from far can enjoy the anointing than people who are close. Remember when Jesus was born, the presents were not brought by the people from the local. The wise men came far from the east. That's why the Bible calls them the wise men. It takes wisdom, knowledge, greater understanding to go and give the one you have been given by God. Maybe you're not hearing me. Jesus is a gift to us. But the gift was celebrated by gifts. That's why the Bible calls them wise men. Because they were celebrating the gifts. That is Jesus. With gifts. Revelation. If you read it very well, the Bible says, after they gave Jesus the gifts, an angel appeared to them in a dream and told them, do not go back the same way. Remember, they came through the house of Herod. But when they gave the gifts, they had a different dimension of operating. How, why did they come through the house of a road? They were being led by a star, a natural thing you can see in the sky. But when they gave Jesus the gift, a star was taken away. The heavens were speaking to them, which means a gift can usher you into a dimension where God can speak to you. Ask Cornelius, he will tell you, your gifts and your arms have come as memorial before the Lord. An angel was sent to a non-believer because of giving. After they gave Jesus the gift, an angel said to them, do not go back the same way. Not a star anymore. That was a new level. A star was taken away. God was speaking to them direct now. Why? Because they've honored Jesus with gifts. Take advantage of the opportunity. Take advantage of the presence of the prophet in all mists. Amen. Uh, let me take you to the cross. One of the thieves said, Lord, please remember me when you are coming in your kingdom. And Jesus said, I'll go with you. They were at the same level. Three of them at the cross. Same pain, same insult. But somebody out of spiritual understanding gave him a request. You don't request from somebody at your level. You request from somebody at a better level. But a thief, this thief was too much. He stole from people, he stole heaven. Imagine a thief making heaven by deeper revelation of understanding that although we are at the same level, same cross, same insult, but Lord, help me. 
if you can see the Lord in pains, the Lord in tongues, the Lord breathing, you are mature. Sometimes the Lord will bleed. It takes those with their spiritual eyes to see despite the bleeding, this man can change my story. Lord, when you come, remember me. Amen. An opportunity was available, but we hit them in bleeding. Jesus. A different dimension of seeing things. The other thief was very stubborn, very quiet. He was not away. Remember Ruth and Naomi. Naomi preached a message. She said to Opa and Ruth, just go back to your fathers, to your gods. I can no longer give birth to a son that will marry you. And Ruth said, your God. That's where the difference is. Your God. Your ability, I don't care. But your God is able. Your God is, will be my God. Which means I've taken the spiritual now. I'm no longer partaking the natural. The natural cannot give me a son. But your God can. Imagine a widow following a widow. Yet there was breakthrough at the end. Imagine Joseph giving a request to another fellow prisoner that when you are out, remember me, not another lawyer, uh, not another man, another major street. He's giving a request to another prisoner. There are people who carry two things. They are thirsty and they've got waters. Amen. They are bleeding and they can take you to heaven. Amen. Only if you knew. Only if you knew. You have been waiting and the answer is already available, but your spiritual insight is still blocked. Remember Haggai and Ishmael, they were crying in the desert of Beersheba. They were thirsty and the Bible said the Lord opened the eyes of Haggai. She saw a well. The Bible does not say and the Lord dug a well. No, the well was already available to somebody who was thirsty, but the eyes were closed. Which means she was crying yet close to the well. And that scripture challenges me this way. An angel said to Aga, stop crying. The Lord has heard the crying of the child, not your crying. They were both crying. I'm sure you understand. A child and the mother, somebody's louder than someone here. But the Bible says it's not about how loud you are. There is another deeper understanding we have in heaven. The blood that speaks, remember Ishmael, is the blood of Abraham, which means he is connected to the prophet. So he, when Ishmael cries, it's the prophet crying. Mandebo shakata. Mandebo shakata. God has heard the crying of the child, yet the child is no much volume. So what's the secret here? Abraham's child is Ishmael. Abraham is a prophet, which means when the child cries under the covering of the prophet, it's the prophet crying. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Woo! Take advantage of the prophet in your midst. Amen. Because when you cry, it's his voice that amplifies that makes the heavens hear you. Amen. When her eyes were opened, she saw a well of water, which means she was crying, she was thirsty, but close to the well. Do you know that you are close to it? Why least you are crying? Why? Only if you knew. If you knew, you are going to act. Because if you know, you act. I remember this saying, I'll put it in Shona. Which is true. Labor is so painful. But I'm very gay. Next year, she'll be pushing. But I'm talking about the Shona. But I see a pusher. Why? They've got a deep understanding. That this pain is a face. But the blessing is permanent. No matter how painful it is to act, but if you know the end result, you act anyway. The wise men celebrated Jesus, the birth of Jesus, with gifts. Yet Jesus is a gift. But the gift was celebrated by bringing also gifts. Remember, I was a child, but they brought gold to him. 
a child, they brought God to him, not to Mary, to him. Which means they have an, another understanding. Although he is a child, he is not a child. Why? Because uh, maybe I'll explain this way. Jesus was not born to be on earth. Jesus was already there. He came through birth to come to earth. The book of John says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became, became flesh and dwelt among us. Which means he was already there. So the wise men are not giving gifts to the child. They are giving gifts to the one who was already there. When you know deeper things of the spirit, you don't look at the edge. You look at the grace. You don't look at the edge. You look at the grace. He was a child, but they gave him God. Why? They are not giving to the child. They are giving to the one who was already there, but born as a child. So when you get deeper understanding, you act differently. You are already in the presence of your answer and your blessing, but you lack a spiritual insight. How to tap and how to connect. A thirsty Jesus is ready to supply water. Yet he's testing. At one time he asked for a boat from Peter and he preached from Peter's boat. At another time he followed stepping on water. Which means he can without your boat. But if he steps into your boat, great fish will follow you. Amen. So uh, make sure you know whom you are dealing with. Amen. Hey. He can walk on water, but sometimes he can ask you for a boat. Come on. One thing I know, God can do without men. But men cannot do without God. There was a time people were no longer interested in prophets in the time of Elisha. When God said to Elisha, go to the chariot of brook, to the cave, and stay there. And the ravens were feeding the prophets, yet the community was there with people. Why did God choose ravens instead of people? If people are not bothered by the prophet, the God of the prophet is still interested in his prophet. The ravens brought meat and bread. And one thing I know, and you know it, ravens cannot bake bread. Which means they were taking bread from someone. Oh, oh. the ravens cannot roast meat. But they brought meat to the prophet. Which means somebody was doing the braai, but he was not calculating the pieces. give this any understanding. When Elisha was given a word by God to go to Zaripat, he met a widow, and the widow said, I've got uh, just a little flower and all you left. Huh? She does not have a husband. There are only two, but they are also running dry. There are not many in the house, but they are already running dry. I've got a little flower, little oil. Oh, so I suspected she was the one who bread was being taken from. Was she already running dry? There are times you need to have this and insight. Don't allow the ravens to give bread to the prophet while you stay around. Amen. I will show you the blessing to the ravens. It was during the time of drought famine. And Elisha was staying at the brook where there was water. Which means in famine, what is scarce is water. So when the ravens were bringing bread and meat to Elisha, they were the only ravens who had knowledge where the water is available. That's why sometimes you are challenged by people who always give. And you wonder. They always give. Why? They always give. They know where the water is. Amen. The ravens knew at the chariot of brook there is water. So we are not moved to take bread there because in return we will drink. And water was scarce during famine. Yeah. I remember Anna saying unto the Lord, if you give me the child, I'll leave him here. Yet there was competition at home with Penina. She was supposed to take the child home and show Penina that God is able. Now I've got my own child. But she moved from competition to revelation. No wonder she brought forth Samuel, who would anoint kings. When you get the revelation, only one child will be so important than many children of Penina. 
If you read the book of Samuel, you will never hear any name of Penina's child. They were nameless, useless. When you honor God, when you respect the house of God, she said, Lord, if you give me the child, I will leave him here. I will leave him here. And that's where the breakthrough came from. She gave birth to a child who had the grace to anoint kings. He anointed Saul. He anointed Samuel, two kings, one man. Because of the dedication of the mother towards the house of God. I'm sure I'm done, but my question is this. Do you know? Because Jesus said, only if you know. There are things in life that demand prayer. And there are things in life that demand knowledge. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not overcome the devil by praying. After prayer and fasting, the devil came. Which means sometimes the devil will come when you have finished prayer and fasting. What will make the devil run is your level of knowledge. He overcome the devil by only saying it is written. Which means he had knowledge in him. Knowledge is the greatest weapon. No wonder God said my people perish because they lack knowledge. With all resources in your hand. But if you lack knowledge, you won't go anywhere. Ask Africa. Africa will tell you. Africa is not poor, but Africans are poor. As a continent, we are okay. That's why they come this side. We call them investors. Business team. But God invested in us with these things. But somebody with knowledge came to use those things that are in our hands. Only if we knew. I want to pray. Just stand up. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for wisdom and knowledge to be upon this ministry. Amen. Usher them into a new dimension, a new level. Amen. As the Samaritan woman turned from just a prostitute to become a great evangelist in the city of Samaria. Father, I pray, may you raise evangelists in this Jesus Generation Church. May you raise evangelists in this ministry. They will go out and preach Jesus. They will go out and win souls. May this church increase in numbers, in resources. Usher them, O oh Lord, into a new level, into a new dimension. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. May you receive the grace. May you evangelize. May you win souls. Like the Samaritan woman having an encounter with Jesus, she went on to win souls from the seat of Samaria. Maria. Father, I pray. I release the anointing and I release the grace. I release the anointing and I release the grace. Raise them, Lord, to another level. Raise them, Lord, to another dimension. Raise great evangelists in our midst as you have called me, anointed me as an evangelist. I release the grace. I release the grace. Raise them, O oh Lord. 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 In this ministry, raise them, Lord. In this ministry, raise them, Lord. New dimension, new dimension, new dimension. Grace, grace, grace. May they protect the anointing and the favor and the fire. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive the grace to evangelize. Receive the grace to make a difference in this ministry. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace. Receive the fire. Receive the favor. Receive the grace. Yaba Shataka, Mandela Bosha, Riba Sade, Menta Balando, Shakyanda Malugata, Menta Baraso, Shiketa, Mente Palikata. Receive the grace to win more souls, to win more souls, to advance his kingdom. Father, I pray a new level, a new level, a new dimension. May they receive the anointing. May they receive the anointing, the grace in this building, in this house. Use them, Lord. Grant them the grace. Use them, Lord. Grant them the fire. Grant them the fire to win more souls, to win more souls. In the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I thank you for the anointing, for the Holy Spirit, who is the living waters, the living waters, the living waters, the living waters to flow, the living waters upon the church. Usher them, Lord. May Samaria know about Jesus. Use them, Lord. May Harare, may Zimbabwe know about this ministry. Know about Jesus. Raise evangelists in their midst. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, church. We may be seated. Thank you so much. Have an Feels like something's changing. Feels like something's changing. Feels like something's changing. 